never been the mom with a baby there and like I'm one of them good morning guys I literally just said I need to show this because it's so beautiful look at this breakfast sandwich I just made for Mary it's croissant Look at the melting cheese, bacon. Mary's been into breakfast sandwiches lately. We froze a bunch and she's been pulling them out of the freezer and having them in the morning, which is awesome. But we ran out, so I was like, I'll make you a breakfast sandwich. Good morning, guys. It's a dreary day. I woke up this morning and I was like, it kind of feels like it's still nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> but Elijah just went up for a nap. He had sweet potato this morning, uh, which was, um, I think he liked the flavor. I think the, I guess sweet potato is kind of similar to carrots. Is it? In my Same mind it color. is. Same color. Anyways, we might, if nap time lines up right, go to story time. I don't think it's gonna line up right, but we'll see. Story time at the library might be fun. Anyways, the grass is happy that it's raining, so I'm happy about that. And it's kind of cooler today. It's like a high of 80 something, which is cool around That's here. That's pretty hot. But like low 80s. Oh, okay. Just saying. Okay, now I'm sitting down to enjoy the sandwich. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. And <clears throat> Houston, we have a problem. What? We are out of half and half and heavy cream and milk. It's time to go to the grocery store. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. Very good. Something about this sandwich just reminded me. I want to see if you'll remember this. ING? Not ING. That was a fun memory too. Oh, okay. Far away. Different food. Far away, different food? Um, Scotland? Mm -hmm. Okay. In Scotland, we had... <laughs> Did we have a breakfast sandwich? Do, no? do you remember? Uh, trying to think of where are those Highland Coos? Oh, did we have a sandwich? When, oh, cheese at the cheese shop? No. When we went to the Highlands, just barely into the Highlands for the day, um, with like a bus of people from his school, University of Edinburgh. <clears throat> we got to the maybe church or somewhere where we were like gathering before we went out into the highlands and they had oh, oh what do they call it that's right melt no bacon um oh bacon bacon rolls bacon rolls i think it was bacon rolls although their bacon is very different i it's mean like, they have straight it's like bacon. ham yeah but i remember that's what this made me think of. That's right. Do they, you remember they, that? So they fed us mm -hmm. breakfast? Mm -hmm. Bacon rolls. Mm -hmm. that, I, I, this is one thing I was thinking about the other day was I feel like Scotland was just a very hospitable place. Or not. Let's see. Well, I just mean like well, in the hospital they bring around the tea cart. Like there's like formalities of hospitality. Yeah. Like I feel like. Uh-huh. I don't know. That's a really good at, point. At least things that we don't have in the States mm -hmm. that are part of hospitality there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like bacon rolls. <clears throat> this is really good. Mm. Today is slightly different because Peter already edited and uploaded the video for today, which is a really nice feeling. I mean, he's probably still going to be working a lot on, we have some like new store stuff. But one of the things I want to do today is make a sourdough bagels. I'm so excited. We were watching a video last night about how to make them. 
then about halfway through the video I was like this looks so fun and Peter was like this looks like so much work <laughs> so we'll see I think it will be fun and more work than the plain sourdough bread that we've been making so the first step is that I need to feed the starter that's what I need We did end up getting a scale. Peter ordered one for like $9 on Amazon. <clears throat> because our mailing scale, we had like an old scale from like our store stuff. And we've been using that and it was fine. <laughs> but this is infinitely easier and much more usable. So. It's, it was a worthwhile $9 investment. So I'm gonna get this guy woken up and then in a few hours slash maybe tonight, we will mix up the dough and then it'll rise overnight and then tomorrow morning we'll make the bagels, boil the bagels and bake the bagels. Now that the sourdough is fed, I'm going to divvy out his uh, Elijah's next um, breast milk bottles and fill up the S&S &S and everything. So we thaw it in the refrigerator and then once it's thawed I divvy it out because these breast milk bags do leak so I try to get them out of the bags as quick as possible. They don't all leak but I've learned in the last six months they definitely leak often. So <clears throat> I'm going to do this and then probably dishes because it's kind of important. Okay, it's already 10.06. Story time starts in 24 minutes. It takes about 20 minutes to get there. <laughs> Pretty sure we're not going to story time, but that's okay. We'll see. He needs sleep, so it's good. Milka. All right, quick update. As of yesterday, I talked with the interventional radiology at the hospital where they would do my port stuff. And they said that the port stripping is for a fibrin sheath, which the pre-op nurses and the nurses in the infusion center, which obviously they work with ports all the time, um, they both, both of those sets of nurses in the last month or so have said this does not feel like a fibrin sheath. I guess when you're dealing with a fibrin sheath, there are certain things, like when you flush it, it feels like this, it doesn't feel like that, this or that, whatever. So I was asking like, I'm not sure that it's a fibrin sheath, I'm not sure it's not, but what is the stripping procedure? And they go in, he said it's basically similar, it's similar to a heart catheterization, which I never ended up having during the transplant evaluation. We basically got to a place where it, they canceled it basically. So I never had the heart cath and so I've never experienced it, but they go through a, a artery, vein, artery. They go through something in your leg and then thread a wire up through your body in your bloodstream, I guess, and then go in near your port in this particular procedure and so I was listening and then um <laughs> um so then they were like, well, what is wrong with your port? I was like, I don't know. I'm being told that they don't really do port studies anymore at the main hospital. And he's like, oh yeah, they don't do port studies anymore at the main hospital, but um, we do it here at the satellite campus. So it seems super reasonable to me to go ahead and do a port study. And that's what this, uh, IR person recommended. There was already an order in the computer, so he was able to just go ahead and schedule me for a port study. I'm gonna be accessed on the 6th for IVIG, which is no longer at home. There's like a change in the situation and I'm now gonna to go to an infusion center. <sighs> Literally don't even ask, I don't even know. So 
we're gonna do that on the 6th. I'll stay accessed overnight. And then on the 7th, we'll go into this satellite hospital, not the main hospital, and go to their IR department. They'll inject dye into my port line and look at it under, I believe, fluoroscopy. It's like a moving x-ray. So to me, that seems like a really reasonable next step. If it's a fibrin sheath, they can see that, I think. And then we'll know going into the stripping procedure that it will strip the line. It'll make the line clean and it will all be good and worth it. If they can't see what's wrong with it, my guess is that it's just something mechanically like something's wrong with the port like the rubber part and the metal part aren't working together or something like that. I don't know. We'll see what that test shows and then we will go from there. <sighs> I, it continues to cause much anxiety and I'm trying to be like kind of factual about it because it is factual, um, but it's also super anxiety producing, obviously. And I think it's so interesting that for different people with different medical needs, different medical things are more or less stressful. Such and such a procedure could be ultimate stress for one patient and very low on the stress for another patient. And then what isn't stressful for one is stressful for the other. Wherever you lie on that spectrum, this is, this is my vice, I suppose. This is just like so much. And um, I was thinking this morning like, I just need to go in there and have some songs that are gonna like speak truth to me. And I'm just gonna be like totally fine. But then again, I remember going into the, uh, the neurologist sent me in, this was like probably five or six years ago, sent me in for a brain MRI. And I went into it saying to myself, you are going to be fine. I have claustrophobia, which has worsened as my lungs worsened. So this was years ago before my lungs got better. And um, I went into that saying to myself, I am going to be fine. And I get in that tube and my brain said, you are in fact not fine. <laughs> Insert panic. Just, oh my goodness, it was so bad. Anyway, um, I got through it not well. And this is another one of those things where I'm like, I think I can do this, but We'll see. Okay, um, random update for today's docket. We are gonna go downtown. Our friend owns a coffee shop and they're opening a new location. So we're gonna go check it out, support them. And that's like in the downtown area. We're like 15 minutes from downtown. And I saw a post in Durham, we have this like sharing Facebook group and somebody posted that their child is in camp and all of a sudden camp was like, oh, you need a flannel shirt for the recital in three days or whatever it is. And apparently they went to all the stores in Durham and didn't find a flannel shirt because it's in the middle of summer. And the child was like sad and stressed out. And I was like, babe, do you have any flannel shirts you're done with? Cause they were asking for like a men's smaller medium. And he said, yeah, no problem. And so he found one that he could give away. And I, so I messaged or I sent a text, whatever. I told her like, yeah, we have one if that works. So we're gonna drop that off to the location where the camp is. And she was just like, thank you so much. And I love that sort of stuff where I'm like, oh, we're done with this. You can totally have it. It's no big deal. And, um, and it, I guess, will just be helpful for this very strange middle of the summer attire requirement for the child. <laughs> How weird is that? Oh, she just texted and said, thanks so much for doing this. You saved the day. Well, we're gonna drop it off and I put it in a paper bag and we're just gonna put his name on it and drop it off.
So that'll be the next thing we do. So instead of story time, since story time literally starts right now, um, we'll just read a story to ourselves. It's just so cute in there. It's like magical orange carpet, which I know that sounds like <laughs> nightmare carpet from the 70s, but this is like clean and fresh, beautiful, bright orange carpet. And these magical puzzle piece cushions and all the little moms and the little babies. It's so cute. And uh, one of the days we went to, they handed out little musical shaky instruments. It's so sweet. They sing songs and read books. It's cute. It's so cute. And I, those are the moments where I sit there and I'm just like, how is this possible? I'm one of the moms. I'm one of the moms here. Now I've gone to those sorts of things with my friends and I'm like, oh yeah, I love this. I love being here. I've brought my friends, kids to the music class at the library and this and that, but I've never been the mom with a baby there and like, I'm one of them. Those moments are really special and a real gift that I never anticipated. Look who woke up. Hi, buddy. Hi. Did you have such a good nap? So, yeah. I'm still waking up. <laughs> okay, just in case I haven't done a cactus. Yeah, there should be diapers in the car. A cactus update in a while. This cactus is doing so well. It grew that top thing and three arms. This cactus in the back is growing double double snake heads up here and kind of a four in one situation here and then this guy you can see how much he's grown he was just that tall when we got him and now he's boop. this guy's still you know the same except these two little blooms one bloom in the back so we'll see and then there's one there We'll see if they actually flower. Guys, I feel like I just had a, like, parent of a young child moment. I was out back on the hammock with Elijah, and I looked down and I noticed my shirt was inside out. And it is five o'clock in the evening, and I realized my shirt has been inside out all day long. <laughs> And I didn't even realize it. You know, that's just the way it goes. Ollie, you wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? There is some giggling going on in this room. What's going on in here? Gonna get you. Is, is mama making you laugh? Is mama making you laugh? Gonna. Get you! <laughs> hey Ollie, you wanna go play ball? Come on, Ollie. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. Oh, a lot of fun and laughter around here. Ollie, go run, run, run. Do you want me to get your ball? Do you want me to get your ball? Oh, we gotta give you guys an update on our bagels. We uh, have the dough all made. Ready, set, go get it. Bring it. Good boy. Okay, let's go show you our bagel dough. It's pretty exciting. And it was fun to make. We kneaded it for 10 minutes. And, um, I'm going to give you a little peek. There it is. Is it getting it, bigger? It is. I think it is growing. And I'm actually curious if we'll be able to, oh, wait. What? I was thinking maybe we could do it before bed, but no, that's not going to work. Oh, yeah. Um, we will let nice. that rise overnight. Wait. What? What? We have to go to the hospital really early. Okay. I don't want the rise to fall. Oh, Maybe well. We are going to do the bagels at midnight. 
Well, is that enough time for it to yeah, rise? Yeah, I think the second rise is only, it's like the other one, like the bread loaf. It's a short second rise. Okay, okay. I don't know. I'm just thinking we have to drop him off at our friend's house before we go to the hospital. Mary has a routine of, um, CF appointment, which let's just acknowledge routine CF appointment. Like what even is that? In our previous life, but okay, we are we, grateful. Oh, we, have to, we have to get going soon. We're headed to a church event tonight, so we'll wrap it up here and say, as always, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Gotcha. <laughs>